I've fried the onions off, so I'm going to now add in. Oops. I'm going to now add in the pumpkin. This is my take on a curry. I don't give measurements or anything. No, it's soup. This is this is my take on soup. I don't give measurements or anything like that because it's how I'm doing it. And that's basically what cooking should be. You shouldn't follow recipes exactly to the letter. You should make it your own. So, there's... some chopped garlic and we'll just fry this off now put some salt and pepper in yes squeaky bomb now that's more or less how I want it. Now this water, when I steamed the pumpkins and boiled the pumpkins ready for canning, I saved the water. So I'm just reheating this water that I blanched the pumpkins in before I canned them and then I'll transfer what's in the saucepan to there and leave it for about 10 minutes or so, something like that. Pumpkin soup. One thing I do when I buy some pots and cheese and you've got the rind this is the parmesan cheese that I bought and this is the rind of it that you don't eat. I freeze it and then when I make a batch of soup up I just bung it in and it adds so much flavour to it, it's unbelievable. In the meantime I've got pan on olive oil I think I've got a few too many onions here but never mind oh for a more lid it may look like quite a bit of onion which it is but it's going to be quite a bit of curry and I don't think this pan is going to be big enough, so I'm going to have to get another pan. As I've told you before, noise in the background is me dehydrator. And that's looking nice and silky now. Roughly fully chopped some garlic. Use as much garlic as you want, if you like or none at all. As I've said, my pan's not going to be big enough. So I'm going to pour it in a bigger pan. I've put my onions, which have started to sweat down a bit, I've put them in here. And they can go over there. I fry off the pumpkin. So the oil's nice and hot. Pop 
pumpkin in it. And just fry it until it's golden brown and then I'll add it to the onions. So I'll come back to you when I'm at that stage. Just tested the pumpkin with a fork and it's pork tender. Cheese is still in there, nice little lump of it. But it doesn't matter if it simmers a bit longer. That cheese will just melt into it nicer. The pumpkin is about getting a bit of colour to it now. And that's all I want you to do, is sort of try and get it crispy on the outside. I'm going to put some raisins in. You know why I'm putting raisins in? Because I can. Because I've got some in. And I'm going to do it with chicken masala curry paste. It requires normally more than what I would do for just the two of us. But because this is more and it's going to go in the freezer. all the jar. That's a curry paste in now. So now we'll add the pumpkins. And there is a tin of coconut milk. This is what you can see now for an afternoon's work with two pumpkins. Uh, you can hear the dehydrator is still going, dehydrating half a pumpkin. I've got five jars of pumpkin and one of water, sterilised water that should be, so that's going to help if there's any bins or cuts or anything that we need that for. My camera battery did die, but there's three trays of pumpkin curry for me and Lurch, and three pumpkin soups, um, and I put peanut butter in them, but I couldn't show you the end because the battery had died on me. But. That's an afternoon work when I have a good knee day and I can do things. This is what I do. So the rest of the time I can choose what to do and if it's a bad knee day I just open some jars or take some out of the freezer. Like I said before though, I try to run my freezer and my pantry down but it's so hard to do when I've got two pumpkins on the shelf in my ex sandy pantry and this together with the dehydrating pumpkin that I'm doing now it's what I'm actually putting back on the shelves. But thank you. Bye. It's a perfect situation.